Hello everyone, my name is Ashan Patwa. Today I will be talking about facial recognition, recognition, face recognition using Bayesian model. This is video presentation is a part of pattern recognition course, uh, Spring 2014. So what is face recognition? Face recognition uh, can be defined as given a still video or image of a scene, identify or verify one or more persons in the scene using a stored database of faces. So in a sense what this says is that if you are given a video or an image, uh, whether or not you can identify if it has a face or not and if so if it does then can you label it can you classify it based on the data set of the faces that you have uh, okay so why is face recognition a challenging problem so uh, to answer to, to answer this question let's say let's let's think about human eye human eye is able to is a very accurate accurate face recognition system it, it works well on a broad spectrum of variables of various environmental conditions and various different lightning condition and it's work, work works well in all of those machine on the other hand is not able to do that so as i as i said before so it, there are huge number of variables involved so for them for machine to take all of them into account and produce a a, a, a very accurate classifier it's very difficult so that's why it's it's a it's a research area that's been highly worked upon so what are so some of the existing approaches there are three different methods, holistic, feature-based, and hybrid models. Um, the, 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 the methods mentioned here are just a subset of what is out there and out in the world, and there are many different approaches pr proposed. So I'm just going to, I've just started down a few that I could uh, think of and I, I know about. So eigenfaces, uh, Fisher faces, PCA, these are all template matching, uh, in, a, in a sense, template matching, template, template matching algorithms. Eigenphase being the first method, I think, proposed by Alex Bentman. Convolution neural networks you must have heard of. Um, Facebook recently announced that they used they, they, they were able to achieve a 99% accuracy using convolution neural networks. Uh, so what are holistic methods? Holistic methods takes a whole face as an input, as a whole. And feature, as you can see, as the name suggests, works on the feature. And uh, you have component-based face recognition as well. So in this uh, project, I've implemented a probabilistic similarity measure as opposed to the Euclidean distance and you know normal correlation methods. So before before talking about my implementation, I'm just gonna spend some time on the, the eigenphase method. Uh, it's a base standard, baseline standard to compare all the performance of all different approaches. And uh, I've implemented eigenphase method as well um, in order to compare my patient implementation of uh, accuracy with eigenphase accuracy. So what is eigenphase? Eigenphase essentially is uh, uh, are the ingredients that comprise of a face. So in, in simple words, these are standard face ingredients derived from the statistical analysis of many pictures of human faces. So what this says is that uh, given those ingredients, you can put them in a particular mixture and you can come up with any face in the world. So these ingredients that we're talking about here are the eigenphases. So this is the thermal theory of computation for eigenphases. It's essentially the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix and uh, face recognition using eigenphases. So uh, how do you uh, apply face recognition by use of eigenphases? So we just take an input image and uh, we project it into eigenspace. And once we are projected into an eigenspace, we calculate the similarity image, the similarity image as shown in the equation here. And once the similarity is uh, obtained, we can either classify, identify it or classify it depending on our needs. So we can compute it for k classes and the highest similarity of the class wins. So this is an input data set. And this is the output eigenphases. So as I said before, the eigenphase is a template matching algorithm. So by template matching algorithm is susceptible to any changes. So O's elimination, distortion, uh, location, all these changes affect the eigenphase method. Uh, Fisher faces is uh, Fisher faces is again um, representing an image to find a subspace that maps the value of simple vectors of the same class in a single point of the feature representation and uh, this is using done using LDA linear discriminant analysis and the eigen vector spanning the subspace uh, uh, formulated by LDA are called the Fisher spaces and okay here's the maths behind that and uh, okay let's now talk about our Bayesian implementation for the project that we have done 
So in Bayesian implementation, as I said before, it it it, it is a probabilistic similarity measure as opposed to the normal a uh, uh, normal uh, Euclidean distance or normalized correlation. So by probabilistic similarity measure, what do I mean by that? So what what we have here is a training data, and what we do here is that uh, we compute the likelihood the likelihood of uh, okay so before that um, the training data is uh, divided so we work on a belief that the image intensity differences are characteristic of a typical variations in the appearance of an individual so once we uh, once we have the training data we divide that into two classes the intrapersonal and the extrapersonal class the intrapersonal meaning the same variations on the same same in the subject and the extrapersonal mean different subjects so we calculate the, the intensity vector uh, given that L i1 minus i2. We calculate the likelihood of this inter intensity vector uh, from the training data set. The likelihood being uh, the likelihood uh, that I mentioned here being p of uh, <coughs> p of delta given omega one and p of delta given omega i omega e. So. Uh, once the, uh, these likelihood are calculated, we use uh, to we use these likelihoods to calculate the posteriori probabilities, the p of omega one given delta and p of omega e given delta, and uh, that for that we can use M A B or M L any one of these. And once we have that, we use this for this particular similarity index to identify or to classify the faces. So, what are the challenges faced in this method? So. As you can see, the intensity vector i1 minus i2 or is uh, is very high dimensional. It's 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 in the order of 10 to the power 4 or even greater. So which which makes the computation of likelihoods pretty difficult because we have a limited set of input images for, for an individual, and the computational resources required also increases with the high dimensionality. So to overcome this hurdle, we use a method eigen eigenspace decomposition uh, subspace decomposition method. This was proposed by uh, this was again proposed by Babak uh, Magadam and Alex Pentland. And what this eigenspace decomposition method does is to decompose it decomposes the uh, the input space into two feature space two subspaces two complementary subspaces, one being the distance in feature space and the other being distance from feature space. So as the name suggests, you know, deep distance in feature space is the is the uh, are the critical variations are the variations which affect the similar which are which have a uh, which have a higher higher contribution to the similarity score and distance from feature space uh, can be thought of a residual space which doesn't affect the similarity score as much. So this decomposition uh, greatly reduces the dimensionality and brings down the computation that we have to do. We can further shrink the computation we have to do on the likelihoods by whitening transformations. So after the whitening transformations, uh, we ref we uh, get rid of the you know overlapping image differences computation, and uh, this is the uh, this is the likelihood function that we get after applying the whitening transformation. So once we have the likely once we have the likelihood estimates, it's easy to calculate the posteriority probabilities using MAP and ML. And uh, based on the posteriority probabilities, we can either classify the M phase and we or we can identify the phase based on some threshold values. So the results and the experiments performed uh, in this projects were uh, done on ORL data set of AT&T. An ORL data set of AT&T, uh, we applied eigen phase approach on that. And uh, as you can see, by increase by increasing the number of components. Uh, in a linear order, we were able to attain higher accuracy. So, as you can see, after a certain number of components, the accuracy stands still. So, this is because uh, this is uh, this is in theory because all the principal components that after that have the highest weight in the similarity measure uh, have been accounted for, and the residual doesn't affect the similarity score as much. So, we were able to achieve. I was able to achieve roughly 94% accuracy with this eigen phase method, and on the other hand, I was able to uh, achieve uh, accuracy as good as 96% using the Bayesian method and varying the principal components from 30 to 60. So, let's have a look at our code first of all. Uh, so, as you can see, that I've already compiled all my codes. So input dot CSV I have used here, which is just a path and a label of my training and the testing images. So.
so let's run the eigenphase code on all the images and I will redirect my output to the folder it takes some time to run so I'm just gonna pause it to save the time Okay, as you can see here that uh, okay so uh, in my code I, I, I just used uh, one uh, image as a testing image and the, all of the other were used as a training image for demonstration purposes my testing image was the last image of the database so it belonged to the class 39 and as you can see the predicted class was accurate 39 and these are the eigenvalues and uh, let me show you all the eigenphase reconstruction that I got from those let me pause this for a while So as you can see that uh, all the nine eigenfaces that all the ten eigenfaces that were reconstructed, the mean images, the eigenface images, the uh, mean images, the reconstruction images using uh, uh, number sixty components and uh, forty five components and forty components, twenty five components, and so on. So let's go to the code first. So this is the code for the eigenfaces that I wrote. So read dot read CSV function just uh, reads the CSV file, calculates the path and the label puts, and this is the recognizer face eigenphase recognizer, the training model. This is the testing model. Once we have predicted the class, I just output all the values into a particular folder. Uh, Fisher face uh, code runs in the same way, pretty, pretty much the same way. Uh, let's just have a look at the Fisher Post code. So again, I'm reading the CSV file, the input file. I'm testing it. Uh, I'm training it using the Fisher Face Recognizer. I'm predicting the label, and I'm just uh, storing all the outputs in a folder. So let's have a look at our uh, code for Bayesian implementation now. So the code for Fisher faces and Eigen faces was written in OpenCV in C++ and whereas I have written the code for Bayesian uh, implementation uh, in uh, NumPy, uh, Python library and I have used below a uh, fork library of Python, the Python image processing library. So uh, there are two two codes for that, so one dataset.py essentially just inputs all the data and just uh, um, here is I'm reading the database, the URL database and I'm putting it into NumPy arrays for the Bayesian, uh, the for the Bayesian class to work on. So this is my Bayesian code, Bayesian.py, so it just takes in all the arrays calculated by dataset.py. Uh, it calculates the intrapersonal matrix computation, PCA decomposition, it does the whitening to reduce the dimensionality again, here is the calculation of the probability likelihoods and the posterior early properties, here are the test images and uh, once the test images are whitened and we calculate, evaluate the test images and uh, predict the label and define the accuracy of the label. <coughs> so this, this method basically uh, so in in conclusion, I get a I got a better performance using uh, 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 Bayesian implementation. Clearly, outperformed the eigenphase technique, and uh, I reduced the uh, dimensionality redu reduction. Obviously, gave me a storage reduced the storage cost for me, and it also took into account all the important indexes, all the important similarity indexes, which critical similarity indexes. So in 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 many ways, the Bayesian implementation is pretty useful for my purposes, and. Uh, in in future works uh, it would be in future works it would be very uh, important it, it, if we can uh, solve the problem of pose elimination from this and uh, different lightning conditions from this Bayesian implementation is a pretty strong technique uh, in face recognition so that should be all thank you